next episode of Late Night Craft Talk. Yes, it is late night and it's craft talk time. Woohoo! Well, oh, not- so tonight we have an awesome guest. We have Tabitha, a published Native American poet, on tonight's show. We're going to be yes. talking about the art of the spoken word. I am so excited. We've been wanting her to come on our show for a long time. A long time, guys. So we finally convinced her. She decided we all were there. Yes, we had to make our show good enough for her. Gotcha. All right, yeah. folks. <laughs> Did I introduce the video? Yes. Yes. Introduce- All right, folks. We're going to play in part of the pre-show. We don't normally do this, but we're going to play a video that I recorded at the beginning of the pandemic where Patrick Stewart was reading poems every day. And I went, you know what? I could do that too. And so I was doing this thing if Patrick Stewart can read poems, so can I. And I read the, uh, I read as a poem, the lyrics to Garth Brooks song, The Thunder Rolls. And we're going to reference this video when it comes to performing and, and realizing art. Uh, uh, the art of poem and, and whatnot. Uh, we're going to reference that uh, later in the show. And so we want to give this as kind of a primer. And there's a lot to cover tonight. So we decided to play it before the show actually starts. And shall we play a bit, Sabaya? Yeah. All right. This play. is a video we've recorded. I recorded you know, almost a couple of years ago on Facebook of uh, the Thunder Rolls by Garth Brooks, including the infamous fourth verse. Guys, just pay attention. When look at his his teacup. Yes, the teacup. Okay, here we go. Hello, my name's James Hermes, and I recently saw a video of Patrick Stewart reading a sonnet, and he's doing it every day. And if Patrick Stewart can do it, so can I. Today's featured poem is a famous one from a famous poet. Today's poem will be The Thunder Rolls by Garth Brooks. And this is the full poem with the fourth verse. 3.30 in the morning, not a soul in sight. The city's looking like a ghost town on a moonless summer night. The rain drops on the windshield, there's a storm moving in. He's heading back from somewhere that he never should have been. And the thunder rolls. And the thunder rolls. Every light is burning in a house across town. She's pacing by the telephone in her faded flannel gown. Asking for a miracle, hoping she's not right. They're praying that it's the weather that's kept him out all night. And the thunder rolls. And the thunder rolls. The thunder rolls and the lightning strikes. Another glove grows cold on a sleepless night. As the storm blows out of control, deep in her heart, the thunder rolls. She's waiting by the window when he pulls into the drive. She rushes out to hold him, thankful he's alive. But on the wind and the rain, a strange new perfume blows, and the lightning flashes in her eyes, and he knows that she knows, and the thunder rolls, and the thunder rolls. She runs back down the hallway and through the bedroom door. She reaches for the pistol kept in the dresser drawer. Tells the lady in the mirror he won't do this again, because tonight will be the last night. She'll wonder where he's been. The thunder rolls and the lightning strikes. Another love grows cold on a sleepless night. As the storm blows out of control, deep in her heart, the thunder rolls. I'm James Hermes, and I'm not jealous of Patrick Stewart. Thank you for watching. There was fancy award-winning material. Yes, I really enjoyed watching you drink your tea, because you very clearly drank your tea very well thank you it was very a lot of work because i was trying to compare myself downward to sir patrick stewart i mean who could compare himself to patrick stewart patrick stewart is the best was the best now it is i with my green screen and smaller audience significantly by exponential amounts no i disagree no no disagree all you want because we we agree to disagree, even though I agree with you. <laughs> I'm just being difficult, folks. Share yeah. the show, get it going. I'm sharing. Yes. So, <gasps> two more seconds to count down. I will start counting down, and so we will take turns as we go. Audience, get ready to count down with us. Hopefully, you shared the show. We've done our part, and yes. here we go. A few seconds left, and ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Two, one, let's go! It's 
time for Late Night Craft Talk. With hosts of Aya Kamori Yang and James Hermes. On this week's show, Tabitha Smith, emerging native poet. What did the poet say to Luke Skywalker? Metaphors be with you. Let's time to start the show. All right, everybody. Welcome to tonight's episode of Late Night Craft Talk. Savea, so glad you're back. Thank you. I definitely got my butt kicked by the booster, um, but I'm glad I got it. So if you guys, if you do decide to do the booster, you're going to give yourself three days. One, two, three. Um, I um, had fever and just rested for two days. And then the third day I was feeling better. And today is number four. And I feel like I didn't even have anything happen to me at all. Gotcha. For those that don't know, the last Friday's show, uh, Svea had to uh, call in sick, bow out, whatever it is. But she wasn't She was not able to do the show. She could have, but she's running a fever because of the booster. I had to handle it that night and uh, run solo. We did it. It was good. But we want Savea here. Yeah, my temperature is about 102 by 8 p.m. last on Friday night, last Friday. So I definitely was chilling a bit. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Helen Howard was on the show uh, about a year and a month ago. She got the booster and she said it started, she started getting sick about six to 12, you know, people she knows, six to 12 hours after the shot in the last two to three days. And you're yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. So it, it definitely is a worthwhile thing. You do want your body to react because when your body reacts, you basically are building up your immunities. So that is important. So yeah. do you know be village village vil, vigilant on you know keeping yourself um, safe because COVID is out there. It is definitely not your average flu or cold. It's definitely a little bit more. So, um, and I've had a lot of friends catch it in the last two weeks. So make sure you just remember it's okay to wear a mask, you know, just kind of keep your chill and masks somewhat do work. Honestly. I mean, I hear that people, I know I'm trying not to get to political, but I just know a lot of people that, that when masks were being required, a lot less people were getting so randomly anyway. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to change the subject entirely. Okay. So James, uh, how was Elk Rack this week? Uh, our website's still down. We are doing a slow, I'm switching hosting companies. Our, we're having a problem with our SSL. It's called the Secure Socket Layer. That is what encrypts the website to makes it safe and minimizes risk for, for uh, shoppers to buy our stuff online. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> I've been putting it out there, but um, the company I had with the conf- it was a conflict. And so I'm switching hosting companies, moving the pro- uh, three websites to move and in the process of doing that. And I'm hoping to have the thing up a week ago, but yeah. on my ball in next week. So it's just, it takes time. It takes time to do it right. Put yeah. it that way. So just and I'm a web master. Huh? Be patient, everyone. Be patient James with everyone. A- Otherwise, uh, did some, uh, went out Sunday, a couple of days after last show, Sunday last weekend. And, uh, did some uh, stocking at the gym and mineral shows over in Quartzsite, Arizona, and picked up some amazing bubble bee jasper, azurite cabochons, and some other stones, and it's just some neat stuff. I caught them before they went to the Tucson Gym Mineral Show, and uh, oh, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I'm gonna have some new, new and neat stuff coming up over the next couple months as I work it because I'm, I'm picking up beads of stones I never started off going, This is cool, and I am just itching to have at these suckers. So it's going to be some neat stuff coming out. Cool. So how, what's going on with Dancing Bear? Oh, we did so much this week. It was a lot of shipping and we've been getting a lot of requests for the CDCR, um, the inmates. So that's something that recently um, has just happened for Dancing Bear. We are an approved CDCR um, vendor. So we actually have items on our website that can be ordered for CDCR inmates. So um, it's kind of a neat thing um, to give them some normalcy in their lives um, and they can do beadwork. So it's kind of neat. Absolutely. Um, And it's quite a process. (laughs) So, but we're going to be sending out, um, we're going to be sending out those catalog requests for them um, probably 
it we're probably we're waiting for the printouts because we're doing some printouts so it's um taking a little bit of time i think we'll probably be shipping them by next week cool so, and then okay. uh it's just so you guys know the, if you guys are looking for a catalog for us there is a printable catalog on our website it's a google doc sheet it's not like the best catalog we are working on a new catalog um this can be a lot different but at least for the time being if you do need to see something that we have so you don't want to look through our website you want a catalog it's actually on our website if you look in the more options menu at the top of our website gotcha um I do. We do have a piece of unfinished business from last week. We last do. Week's show. Now, for those of you that uh, missed last week's show, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we did a STEM episode where we talked about uh, Parker Solar Probe that orbits the sun. It gets close enough to actually has entered the corona of the sun, the outer parts of the corona, which is the outer atmosphere, which is amazing. And Juno, the polar orbit around Jupiter, as well as the James Webb Space Telescope. Well, we received a letter. Uh, of someone that was actually uh, referenced on the show that was not a real interview. It was faked. It was, it was a parody. And they were a bit upset. We did a bit where we had Parker, we were interviewing the sun. And Parker Solar Probe was buzzing around it. And the sun decided to do a coronal mass ejection and was shown with part of the corona blowing off that creates a solar wind and throws debris out in space. And it was shown to a fart, to a farting sound. And so we actually received a letter from the sun. Oh, son, uh, I will paraphrase the letter, but the letter basically said, dear host of late night craft talk, I do not be appreciate being shown as the object that, that blesses you with lighting the sky and warms your planet of being severely flatul severe flat suffering from severe flatulence. Okay, James, you know, that was your idea. And I had strongly suggested that she edit it out, but you're just like, no, I think that's really important. And I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy watching that. Well, the sun is, uh, the sun is asking for apologies. Savannah and I have talked about this. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, Savannah, your guilt by association. Um, uh, it was addressed to both of us that I will say that we, the hosts of late night craft talk, apologize to the sun that lights our sky, that is a giant ball of helium and hydrogen, so hot that it splits atom and creates fission, combines elements, throws out coronal mass ejections, solar wind, plasma flares, that throws out radiation, x-rays, all these things that we sincerely apologize that insinuating, insinuating that you suffer from severe flatulence. They also powers all our electrical solar, batteries and our solar houses and our solar farm from all the light and, and other things cars. that emit from the sun much like and occasionally lets out other particles and put it out when it lets goose when it has too much gas built up and releases it in the and form of says he's sorry in, in the form of solar flares or coronal mass ejections yeah we start we apologize son that you have a farting problem James Extra apologizes and promises you that he will apologize in many ways of other atonements. And other atonements. Sorry, son, you giant ball of gas. I hope you didn't offend it then, because honestly, you're gonna that just sounded like you pretty much just re-offended it. It's the sun. It's science. It was a STEM episode. But it sent you an email and me an email. The you sun, like, I know it was hot too. I know. This is makes it an issue, James. You yes. got to think a little bit more about these things. My monitor almost melted reading it. <sighs> okay, we're done with that because we uh, almost crashed and burned it, but we are recovering just in time. <laughs> All right, folks. Tonight is a poetry episode. Yes, we have talking a really about the awesome gift. Guest. I'm so yeah, oh, yeah. We're going to be talking about the art of the written word and the way it can convey in art. Oh, wait a second. You know what? I think I need to read a bio. Yes, please. Okay. We have a very, very amazing, cool guest tonight. So we have a bio here to read you. Tabitha is an emerging poet writer from Sacramento, California, and is an enrolled member of the North Fork Mono Tribe, Eagle Clan on her grandmother's side. In addition to Conco, oh, shoot. 
<laughs> do we need I'm another sorry. do we need to get another letter of apology going yeah because i'm like butchering this i'm sure you know i'm gonna let her say it because she has the proper way to say it okay she attended american river college and san diego state university studying astronomy and american indian studies her pieces have been published in several editions of news from native california and highlight topics relevant to the contemporary Cali Native experience. Tabitha works as an administrative professional, provides mentorship within her local Native community, and creates traditional beadwork. She currently resides in San Diego, California with her husband, Jason, and dog, Coda. Wonderful! I'm All right, so folks, let's bring it. Let's, let's, Tabitha. She let's is bring out Tabitha. Tabitha. So. With that amazing bio we have on tonight's show, Tabitha Smith, Emerging Native Artist. Yay! Welcome, Tabitha. Hi, you're Tabitha. You're going to be one of the coolest guests we've had in a while. You're going to be one of the standouts. I am so sorry. I butchered, butchered, butchered the tribe. So if you could do me a favor, if you could say it for me, please. No problem at all. I know a lot of people aren't familiar with some of the smaller tribes in California, but as Savannah mentioned earlier, I am from the North Fork Mono tribe on my grandmother's side, Eagle Clan, um, from North Fork, California, which is in the Central Valley. And on my grandfather's side, I am Kung Kao Maidu Wailaki. Very awesome. And I'm sorry, that's from Round Valley Reservation up in Mendocino County. Okay. I just got I just got to think that the. Uh... Savia usually harps on me when we have Navajo guests and I mispronounce the Navajo word. She's like, well, Savia. I know. I was like, oh no. Like I was fine. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, I'm just going to butcher it. I just can't. <laughs> but it, but it's all awesome because we're learning. Yes. We're learning. We're going to learn from you along with our audience tonight. Yay. And that's what matters. Okay. So Tabitha, we are very excited you're here. So let's start off by asking you some questions um the first thing i'd like to ask for you is how much time do you need for each poem oh my goodness that is i mean that's just like asking someone how long does it take you to finish a painting how long does it take you uh to finish any type of creative piece of work and i think it could be something as quick as 10 15 minutes it could be something as long as years um, because there are pieces that i constantly revisit um, and kind of tweak you know to kind of just make it a little bit better than it was before um, or to serve a different type of purpose so yeah <laughs> It just all, really, it just really depends. It's a lot of crafting, like you're massaging the words and you're just making them rhyme and feel good together. Maybe not rhyme, but just they really, you, you're you always working on the flow. Well, it, Absolutely. It, I'd, imagine, I'd imagine it's like any art piece that you have a piece that you, 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 you may realize the middle or the end of the poem. Sometimes it's like anything. And you know the end, or you want to go out and say, and then you put it together, and it's just like it's not coming. So maybe you put you may put it around the side or a file wherever you write it, and it may sit off to the side for a while until suddenly you could be driving a car, taking a shower, wake morning, uh, waking thoughts in the morning, and boom, you got it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Just like with any type of craft, um, beads or painting or leather or you know anything, words and the syllables and you know nouns and adjectives i mean they're all a part of the mechanics that make up a poem so yeah well yeah we know that you've been doing uh bead work and whatnot for native crafts for quite a while right native artistry with that what inspired you to create poetry to take on that art form the art of the word right you know i feel that i began i've always wrote in journals. I've always been a journal writer since I was a child and just kind of writing down your thoughts, feelings, emotions. As I got older, um, I actually realized that I have anxiety. I have um, generalized anxiety disorder that I was diagnosed with some years back. And, uh, you know, I realized that writing was a form of 
uh, healing for me to be able to get all of those thoughts and emotions out of my mind, off of my heart onto paper. And then once I read them back, I was kind of, you know, a little bit blown away by some of the thoughts and feelings I did have and how I was dissecting them and learning to understand them a little bit more. So that's actually how I started writing poetry. And then, you know, just like with every other craft, I'm beating, I'm, you know, out in nature and all of the life around you becomes inspiration, right? Out of curiosity, because um, granted, the, the, your poetry coming over and you writing poetry is self-improvement, correct? Absolutely. It's self-improvement. Um, and imagine that when you realize some of these anxieties you may not have realized you had that came out from the word, the feelings you put out. Uh, I know people that like say if they have to report a report, say law enforcement or whatnot, and this is going to translate over. Hear me out. When they write the report, or I have to write a report when I used to do uh, security, um, that when you you know it's there, you write it down, and all of a sudden it's like externalized. It's like, I don't remember this. Because you put what you have out on the paper, and you're like, and when you look at it, all of a sudden it's like from an outsider, it's from an outside looking in a little bit. You become kind of um, neutral looking at it in a way. Do you find that with your own realizations in your own self when you finally look at the poetry and read it later? Oh, absolutely. And I feel like, I mean, I've always been a strong writer. So even for work and, and proofreading essays and, and doing anything like that, when I go and I read a piece, um, one thing that I've been taught is right to, to remove the fluff. So I think in college, a lot of us are used to writing essays and you're trying to meet that minimum work count and you like try to just you know, fluff it up to meet that minimum word count. And I feel like poetry is the exact opposite. You're taking away all of that fluff to get to the meat and bones of it. And just like you said in a report, you don't need all the fluff. You need the basics, you need the foundation. And that's really how I see poetry. It's like the foundation. And just like with a scientific um, theory, you know how they say the more complicated the theory, we're probably not close to what it actually is and the more that you simplify it and the more that you get it down into layman's terms that people could actually understand and digest you're closer um, to whatever you are trying to portray and whether it's a thought emotion um, or scientific theory you know there actually is an even really simpler poem called a haiku <laughs> <laughs> i mean there literally is the poem that's like this big and it's called a haiku so absolutely i and, just had a moment of realization that i could in a poem i just i i, I just i just wrote it down you want to you want to hear it i don't know is it sure. okay <laughs> this is conveying my fears and my realizations about the show and my co-host ready we put it out there for our public i'm gonna put it out there now roses okay. are red violets are blue Okay. If you don't like Princess Leia, Sabea doesn't like you. <laughs> the For those of you who don't know, Princess Leia is Sabea's daughter. Really awesome little cute chihuahua. Oh my gosh, that's really that fun. is hilarious. <laughs> am I am I accurate? A little yes. bit. So accurate. Okay. Yes. Yes. One hundred percent. Gotcha. I mean, so who is going to love that little dog? She's like so sweet. Like she loves everyone. She may bark, but she loves everyone. I bring out my tort, my sulcata tortoise, but she's 60 pounds, sleep at night, and not as cute as and harder to dress in costumes. Not very affectionate. Oh my God, I would love to see. Actually, her. she is affectionate. <laughs> a little too much, the point that she'll crush your foot. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you are published, correct, Tabitha? I am. I am actually, uh, my fifth poem will be published this winter in the edition of News from Native California. I'm very excited and it should be out. It's actually out di in digital and it's hitting uh, mailboxes and newsstands now. I think we, we do have a picture of the uh, publication. Should we turn it, bring it up? Yeah, sure. yeah. Okay. News from Native California. And that beautiful yeah. picture that we had even on your intro for the intro slide for you to come on. Awesome photo. God, that's an awesome photo. So it's, I mean, it's the, the poetry, and it's the poetry of the of the photo of the of the picture. Is that thank you that's coming out now or that's that's like an older one? 
<laughs> this is an older one. So I was actually, um, the piece that was featured within this edition is called California Queen. And I can read it for you all when we get to that part. Okay. Um, but it just so happened to be a photo that kind of felt, fit the essence uh, especially moving down here to Southern California from Northern California, we kind of have the surf culture. And I think, um, you know, when people think of California, you think of, hey, dude, surfer, dude, blonde hair, blue eyes, surfer girls. Yeah. Um, and I think just to kind of, con as a contrast to that, I'm thinking, okay, well, here I am, a California native um, to the blood, tied to the land. And, um, you know, you have that sense of erasure. And so this photo was actually taken, um, not with that thought in mind. Um, this is actually a photo from one of our, um, it was just like a couple shoot that we did prior to even being married. And the photographer just captured it, um, it just so eloquently. And it, it goes along with that poem. So yes, News from Native California features all types of current events and features a lot of different types of artists and activists and educators from across uh, Native California. And uh, yeah, so if anyone, they have an online presence, you could check out their digital copies there, or you could also sign up to receive them. Gotcha. Matter of fact, let's look at, we have one of your, we have a picture of one of the, uh, the inside of that magazine. And let's take a quick look at that. Here we have from the inside news from native California in your poem that looks at, it reads the truth always has the last word. Is that the poem? Is that, wait, that's, yes. a different, that's a different poem from the other magazine. Uh, yes. So it's another magazine. This is the most recent one I believe was published last year, 2020. And um, I used to be in a writing group. So we would meet in San Marcos once a week. And it's pretty interesting. We would be, it was just a group of random writers. Some were published, some were not, some were amateur. Um, but we would be given a writing prompt and set a timer for 30 minutes and just write. And this was a piece that um, the prompt was truth. We're talking about the publication that you are published. Do you mind sharing a couple of your poems with us? Yes, share with us some of your sure. awesome work. Thank you. I'll go ahead and start with the first one uh, because you have the photo up and it, it just goes along so well with it. The name of it is called California Queen. Bronze skinned empress gilded in gold, ocean breeze swept locks illustrious and bold. Luminous smile radiates vivid as the sun. Noble energy flows endless as the valley rivers run. Splendid eyes bright as poppies in their peak. Roots regal like oaks, sturdy and deep. Glorious rule stretches vast as the beaches are long. Impeccable mind open, but culture sequoia strong. Lavish physique fertile like Yosemite in spring. Heart temperate as the Mojave, blazing supreme. Grandiose throne sits high atop the Sierra mountain range. Sovereignty ancestral, unrelenting to change. Indigenous goddess reigning a millennial, so serene, second to none, she is the mighty California queen. Oh, I have chills. I oh, that's awesome. Have, like, I, have <laughs> I swear to gosh, I have goosebumps on my arms. I never can see them, but I have goosebumps. Thank you. <laughs> that was Thank cool. You. I loved it. So I totally outclassed my roses are red poem. <laughs> Yeah, I, lots. Hello. Like, seriously. well, James, I really thought you would like that one because I know that you do a lot of adventuring and kayaking, hiking, all of that. Savia, you do a lot of camping, and I think, you know, for all of us, we're tied to the land in some way, and that was just a way for me to honor our Native women here, mm. um, and our Mother Earth as well. Yeah, that is a wonderful, wonderful poem. Thank you. So the next one I'll read is actually the one that will be po uh, that will be published this month, and it's called Adornment, and it's about the process of beading and beadwork. Um, so here it goes. Motionless, the needle hand sits as the tip of nylon thread presses through the microscopic hole. Initial resistance is met with acceptance as the fine fiber prepares itself for creation. On a large tray, a vibrant array of seeds are assembled into tiny mounds, each assigned with predetermined instruction 
ready for a launch to awaken a blank foundation of fabric. By the hundreds, they wait anxiously for selection. The slender needle gently dips into each pond of color, counting off in sets of integers to a code that mimics the pattern of, a, of the white veins of the petal of a bright red rose. Sun after days, moon after phase, this cycle repeats to reveal sections of perfectly curated rose. Aligned only by the presence of their neighbor, alone they are hope, together they are prayers. Every bead represents a wish, a wonder, a word of love and encouragement for its future keeper. These woven designs are tradition, culture, reimagined into a wearable piece of art. So that is adornment. That is really cool. Getting some head nods from us. <laughs> Thank you. I, you know, my auntie taught me how to bead when I was nine years old. Um, I first learned on a loom and, um, you know, I think like all of us that craft and learn um, those kind of things, we're forever perfecting our process and the method of doing it. And yeah, that just came to me as I was beating one day and yeah. That is really a nice, I really like that. I think this might be the time where we start breaking down to help some of our viewers okay. learn this healing and self-realization improvement that you're learning yourself that you've experienced mm -hmm. and well on your way and doing amazingly Thank to you. break down the creative process out they can take the word because granted you don't have to be a master of the word and know all be you know totally like total what's the word here i'm forgetting the word i'm talking about words eloquence yes the eloquence the flow of words some people are going to be like you know uh earl from quarantinos Hi, my name is Earl. Not exactly the most sophisticated words, but you don't have to say it's sophisticated <laughs> words. You have to use the words you know and expand from there. So we can start by the beginning of the creative process for this road of self-improvement through the word and, and realization. Yeah. I mean, I think first of all, ahead, but... oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so they, are you going? Okay, or... so, so let me make it simple. Okay. Where do you start? Like, yeah. where do you start? Yeah, because James has got to make things overly complicated. <laughs> I was like, that was a pair, like a mile long. And I'm like, no, that's okay. I got it. I followed See, it. Me talking about big sophisticated words and the survey goes, <laughs> where do we start? Hey, you know what? It's been yeah, a long day for me. Absolutely. And her, so. Right. So I think the first place to start is by reading other people's work. So I think for me, it started from a very young age, reading authors like Maya Angelou, um, and Joy Harjo, who currently is the U.S. Poet Laureate, and she's native Muscogee Creek, and um, it's just that she's published a ton of books and poetry, and, um, you know, being able to see other people really um, use creative writing to process events that happen in their lives, whether it's, tra you know, tragedy or triumph, um, and yeah, so starting with that and then just writing, using a journal, writing on a piece of paper. A lot of people type, I hear people that type every morning and just kind of a brain dump, doing a brain dump, just getting these thoughts out of your head, out off of your heart. And like you said, being able to go back and read them and kind of you find beauty in them uh, from the outside looking in like, wow, you know, I didn't know that. I was feeling so deeply about this, or I didn't know that my thoughts were so profound about it and being able to just explore more and see where it takes you really as with any creative process. I found a poem, like I read it to you forever, like a while ago, I found a poem that I was feeling, I was writing down my emotions about how I felt about painting on a skull, mm. like on a cow skull. And it was like, and I was like, wow, that was intense. I'm like, I know, oh my goodness. And this was me when I was in high school. Right. Yes. And I think that's, that's the most important part is for me is processing thoughts and emotions that are very complex, that may be hard for you to talk or discuss with anybody else. And the first thing to do is just to get it out, get it out on paper, get it out, um, you know, typing and being able to make art with it. You know, and it could be fun as, as 
I have some pieces, like I said, I study astronomy. So you kind of hear, uh, you know, those, those thoughts and feelings kind of <clears throat> woven into the pieces and being able to, I like uh, to explore the mechanics of things, right? So just like with the beading, you know, each and every part and piece kind of dissecting it and being able to give emotion to those and um, be a voice for those that don't necessarily are still finding the voice. Great. Here's another one. This is going to be a little work with me here because apparently I overthink, over, over explain things on the show tonight. But um, part of what you've probably experienced is the inner voice. Mm -hmm. And do you find when your inner voice, it sounds differently than when you may read it out loud, what you may think you sound like and what comes out, but you've tried reading your stuff out loud and you doesn't quite, it helps you formulate your voice, put it that way, your message. Yes, I, I feel like with some of my pieces, um, if when I read them out loud, it doesn't feel like something I would normally say <laughs> in a regular conversation. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I'm ahead. leading, I'm actually leading to something here is that okay. uh, with that, do you recommend that people practice reading if they're an aspiring poet, they can appreciate the poetry, they want to try their hand in it, try performing it. Oh, absolutely. And that's I what I mean by like, Okay. Reading it out loud, yes. hearing your voice, hearing that, and then yes. be able to and use that as a training for yourself to appreciate the inflections of it. Right. I think absolutely. Because like I said, there's poetry, there's some poetry that rhymes, but not all poetry rhymes. And so when you do read your pieces and that those inflections and how even the 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 tempo of the words, right? Just like as with a sewing machine, you're sewing patterns or whatever the case may be, the tempo really can drive and it drive the a piece. You know, you pick up the pace and you get, just like with music, you know, the beat picks up. And so your heart starts to raise a little bit more and you're kind of anticipating what that next one is. Um, I think with my style, I kind of slow it down uh, because my mind is always racing. So I actually slow the tempo down a bit so that folks are still anticipating the next line or the next word, um, but just in a different way. Gotcha. You know, it almost feels like when you're reading poetry and you're performing poetry, it's almost like being an, an actor, like you see the lines and, you know, it's how, when you're talking about delivery, like, so if you have this like Shakespearean line or you have like, Oh, like, you know, like you pick whatever movie you like, right? And you take that line, that favorite line of your actor that you like says this one line and it just makes sense, right? It's like how they deliver the line really conveyed the message versus if they did it totally different, it would change the, change the story entirely, right? So when you're saying like the intention of, saying it slowly or to say, you know, the tempo and it really, it affects how your poem is. So with that, um, you know, we talk about the, the special word in visualizing, we talk about songs and people realize that music is poetry. And during the pre-show, we did play that video uh, that I recorded at the beginning of the pandemic that we did for everybody, just kind of, we're going to start referencing it now, where I, I wrote, uh, I read the, uh, Garth Brooks song, The Thunder Rolls with the fourth verse. And, and that's when I, that's actually my, my train of thought here when we were talking about reading it out loud and knowing the performance of it to really appreciate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can see my inflections as I'm realizing and get a mean face, get serious and kind of slow down in the reading is that I'm gonna start to appreciate the nuances of it. And that's what, that, that's where I went with the, the question here a couple of minutes ago. James, it'd be like, okay, when we start our show, be like, hi folks. <laughs> Sounds like a cold start. Us today. <laughs> so what's we had a great week? Bueller. <laughs> or like we had a great Bueller. week. It was so much fun. It was like, okay, that really affects how the show is gonna be like, yay, or poo. <laughs> okay, anyway. Well, that's what we decided to do. Anyway. Um, but what that uh Tabitha, what do you think? Uh what songs do you recommend that you that you feel help uh help people appreciate the poetry of the song. Oh my gosh. There's so much music out there. And I think it really just depends on the genre that 
you know, a, let's that look at the, you, the poetic, the poetic uh, attributes, the poetic qualities of the song. I think all songs because are some poetic. songs like "Um Boogie Boogie" or "Um Booga Booga," "Sha Na 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 Na." Well, so I really poetry. think you know, I really think it has to do with the artist, right? So I, I think there's feel good music, right? That's just it has its moment, you know, that you just don't want to think, you don't want to feel you kind of just want to have a good time right but then there's also right there's also very thought-provoking artists that are out there that really dive deep and give you know give words to the emotions that we're feeling during some of our you know darkest moments that we have whether we're grieving uh suffering a heartbreak um or just sell and then there's ones that we're celebrating life you know what it feel what a good life uh, feels like and I think that's why we all resonate with music one way or another even if it has no words yeah right? like, you know or even no music expialidocious I mean that means something it doesn't but it does mean something when you talk to about getting a breakup I suddenly might. started <laughs> when you start when you start talking about breakup I started thinking of <laughs> Earl's gotta die by the Dixie Chicks <laughs> not feel good not a good breakup song right uh, there's also like, one, yeah. I think like when I, I feel I, like tired, I like or just want to just kind of just chill. I'll turn on Pink Floyd's "Dark Side of the Moon" and I turn the lights uh, off. Listen to the music. I love it because it just it just makes me feel like so like mesmerized by the music. You know, I so. like to play "For Whom the Bells Toll" by Metallica. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, so, Chinese uh, Democracy by when. <laughs> Roses was good before before slash left and axel became fat mm -hmm. anyway and i love artists like india ari who's like neo soul and one of my favorite songs is like strength courage and wisdom which it's like simplicity but it's also those words that we need to hear about ourselves that it's all within us um, and I do have one last piece. It's very quick. Um, if it's okay, if I could just close us out on this. Yes, let's do it's it. One, it's one of my first ones that I wrote. <clears throat> so it's a little bit more simplistic, but um, I like it. It is called A Life in the Sunshine. Change occurs when situations in the present no longer suffice. Destinations re rearranged, conditions the same, no time to decide what's right. The mind seeks elevation, internal revelation, reflect a heart that's yearning for more, willing to gamble all that it's worth to unveil what the future beholds. Hate sulks in the shadows, fear festers in the cracks, and jealousy feeds on the weakness you show. Negativity has no place, only poise and grace, dignity and faith, holding space for what's in store. A life in the sunshine, soul filled and divine, is what I'm striving for. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> I love hearing that. That's good. Thank you. And I think that's just one of those feel good pieces that, you know, I think we all kind of get to that point in our lives when we're like, okay, well, what we're doing is cool, but I want to do more. I want to do more, but what is that? You know, what does it look like? And we, you know, our lives are ever changing and evolving sometimes by choice, sometimes by force. Um, but ultimately the end game is that, you know, want a life in the sunshine. Yay. Thank you so much, Manahobu. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome, Tabitha. You're always welcome on our show. We love you. And um, we were very honored that you would come on our show and talk about your poetry. Thank you. Yes, I Tabitha, know always, always, always awesome having you on. Thank you. Thank you. You add, enough, I, you add some extra class to the show because <laughs> it brings it up. I bring it down <laughs> and you bring it up a bit more. <laughs> Thank so we're, you. we're cruising just above a snake's ass in a, in a wagon rut. <laughs> Thank you. Well, April, just really quickly, quick plug, April is National Poetry Month. So that's also a great time to uh, highlight poems and poetry. And um, yeah, May is also uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, those are also some really good times to use writing as medicine and 
provide prompts to your listeners who are so glad that you guys have provided this platform to showcase so many different artists and um, and your own work as well. So thank you. Can I can I can I can I try to make a poem with you two with, with your input right quick? <laughs> sure. I want to talk about I'm going to do it with beauty and one of the most beautiful things you can think of. And I'm going to try to formulate my thoughts as it happens. The humble cupcake. Okay. I just saw the cupcake now on my desk right there and I went, I got to do something with this. Shall we try it? Let's go. Oh, cupcake with the sprinkles on top of the top. <laughs> and the paper wrapper that wraps you like a cradle with frosting on top. How you are so discriminatory delicious and spread joy to children that when I bite thee, I have a mouth full of rainbow sprinkles. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, poignant with what I was <laughs> poignant. <laughs> very funny. The creative process. Thank you, folks. Yes, I think uh, you don't receive any emails from the cupcake. Hopefully. Sounds it shouldn't be sounding. All I know is uh, I'm going to keep my day job, but the Pulitzer's coming. As well as a Grammy. <laughs> and, quite, sure, and, and, and a nanny. I want a nanny. For sure. We're going we're gonna to get an Emmy for the show, I'm sure. I want a nanny. It's the American Music Awards. I have, a, I, have a, I have a place on my shelf over there for an Emmy for this show. Actually, I have a friend. He's a, he's a cameraman. I've been trying to get him on the show. And he's actually got two Emmys. He says oh, wow. you have a lot, of, a lot of Emmys. And we're doing this meeting and we're, we're doing a fun thing saying, show the most useless thing you, ha you have. And he comes out with two Emmys. And he goes, I got these because I showed up. Wow. And apparently the awards were happening. He showed up to the awards. He got it. But uh, he was at some news thing. It was a long story. But it was just weird. He's like, show your most useless things. And he goes, okay. <laughs> and we're all going. Wrong. No. Jeez. Trippy. All right. Okay, Boy, James. Trippy. Huh? James, so how, so uh, what's the, what are we going to talk about for next week? Okay, Tabitha, always great to have you. So let's go ahead and introduce next week's show. We've gone hey. from STEM last week to the Art of the Spoken Word, and it's, it's an amazing episode, Art of the Spoken Word to next week. We're, uh, we're going to get to the point. A short history and overview of arrowheads. Yes, arrowheads. Woo! Point. Sharp pointy objects. We're going to learn about napping. And then Savea pretends she's sleeping because it's spelled K-N, not S. Okay. In. So we're going to be, I'm a, I, I'm a nap arrowheads. I knock the nap arrowheads. It's a fun thing we do. We're going to bring out and kind of explain the different types of arrowheads you find in North America and how they're specialized. It is, is not a watching the, gr the grass growing episode. This is really cool stuff, especially because it's sharp, pointy things that go jab, 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 jab. Okay. They're awesome. And we even show some of the stone awls. You know, y'all you to do fabric. We're showing no, all those. Jim, yes. don't, don't, don't spoil all the sp secrets for next week. All right, y'all. Okay. All, all right. All right. So, okay. You ready, hey, folks? Yeah. They're gonna, gonna be a fun show. Let's uh let's go ahead and get this queued up. We're gonna dance it out. And this has been another episode. Again, Tabitha, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Tabitha. You're awesome. Yeah. Oh, and then one more thing. We're gonna put Tabitha's information into the into the uh so you can follow her on Instagram. We're gonna put her Instagram handle in our description so that you can follow her because she's awesome. Absolutely. Because uh just don't say Insta like that one character we want to do away with the influencer character. The oh, influencer. all right. Oh, okay. Her, yeah. Ugh. Savah. Uh. All right, folks. This has been another. <laughs> now we're going to finally do it. We're going to dance, but uh, this has been another episode of Late Night Craft Talk. We'll see you all next week. Dance, I tell you. Dance. Dance. Huge trap dance.
Oh, ain't he cute? <laughs>